Welcome to the Manwa world. In the heart of a storm, where rain lashed against the windows like desperate fingers seeking entry, the night held a secret, a sorrow that gripped the Marquis Renard's mansion with icy fingers. It was the night Arabella, his beloved daughter, went missing without a trace. As lightning split the sky, illuminating the darkness with its jagged brilliance, Marquis Renard and his wife embarked on a relentless quest to find their missing child. Each passing hour felt like an eternity, each false hope a cruel twist of fate. Though everyone thought it wouldn't take long to find her, Arabella was never found. The news that Marquis and his wife were searching for their missing daughter spread far and wide like wildfire. But amidst the chaos and confusion, one truth remained unshakable. Arabella was gone, leaving behind a void that no amount of searching could fill. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, Yet Arabella remained elusive, a ghost haunting the halls of her family's once vibrant home. And countless, Arabella, showed up at the manor, each claiming to be the lost daughter, but it was one disappointment after another, none could fill the void in the Marquis's heart. On a night much like the one Arabella had vanished, when her mother was sitting in her room, a figure appeared at the door, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. Clad in a red dress, with innocence shining in her eyes, the girl entered and said, It's time for dinner, mother. But as her mother's gaze fell upon her, a name escaped her lips, not Arabella, but Anita. She moved towards Anita. She kept her hand on Anita's face, and in that moment, the weight of grief and longing lifted, replaced by a bitter realization, and she said, Anita, while you get to enjoy all these luxuries, she sniffled. I can't even imagine what hardships my Arabella must be going through. Anita was looking at her mother with a grief in her eyes when her mother said, You may leave now, with a single word. Mother. Anita's world shattered into a million fragments, as the slap of reality stung her soul. With the slap on her face her mother shouted, I told you to leave. Anita squeezed her hands and turned. Her mother sobbed. Arabella. My Arabella. While Anita was taking each step back, she could hear her mother sobbing. Everything Anita has should have been yours, Arabella. In the echoes of her mother's sobs, she found solace in the bitter realization that she was but a shadow cast by the absence of Arabella. Descending the staircase, each step was a silent testament to the unspoken tragedy of Anita's existence. After they lost Arabella, Marquis and her wife were forced to have another child to continue their lineage. While looking at the hanging picture of her parents, Anita thought to herself, That child was me, Anita. I guess they couldn't bring themselves to love their second child they were forced to have. Because they felt too guilty toward Arabella. Growing up in all these people who only thought about Arabella, Anita had heard so many harsh words for her. She heard a maid, holding a beautiful gown, talking to other. If Lady Arabella were alive, she would have been able to wear dresses like this. The other replied, She had her mother's silver hair, so this color would have suited her. Lady Anita on the other hand. Anita, sitting in a garden, was thinking, There was only one person who actually paid attention to me, Axion, Archduke Lacade's son, son's successor, my fiancé, and my only friend. Only Axion saw Anita for who she truly was, offering her solace amidst the storm of her existence. In his eyes, she found refuge from the storm, a glimmer of light in the darkness that threatened to engulf her. Whenever another fake Arabella came to the manor and distracted my parents, Axion would invite me to the Lacade Manor. There, I could just be Anita, instead of the girl who stole everything that should have belonged to Arabella. Anita thought to herself. Reflecting on the miraculous day when Arabella returned unexpectedly, she said, but one day as if to reward my parents' efforts. Upon spotting their missing daughter, her parents were flinched, recoiled in disbelief, unable to trust their own sight. They dashed towards Arabella, yelling, Arabella! A young girl, dressed in tattered clothing, stood there in a state of disrepair. Arabella finally returned. She confirmed her identity through the imperial holy relic. Her parents were ecstatic, embraced each other with joy upon finally locating their daughter after extensive efforts. She was indeed the real Arabella Renard. 
She had been missing for eighteen years. Upon finding her, her mother genially remarked, My darling! Anita, who was watching her parents loving Arabella dearly on seeing her thought, I knew this day would come. Anita was observing the activity throughout the entire household as her father addressed the worker. We need brighter colors! Her mother added her concerns. She has had a rough life, so we must make her room bright and warm so she feels safe. A maid holding a carpet said, I will bring another carpet. On the dining table, containing various types of foods, everyone was gathered around Arabella. Have some more dessert, my lady, a maid offered. Her father noticed her state and expressed worry. You're far too skinny, my dear. Her mother, while adding her concern, advised. We need to feed her more nutritious food. I'll tell the chef to double the food budget. While displaying lovely dresses to Arabella, her mother remarked, Your dresses will be much fancier than Anita. Thinking about jewels, she said, Arabella should receive all of our family jewels as well. They belong to her in the first place. While thinking about fancier dresses, foods and shows, Anita said, My parents wanted to give Arabella the best of everything. That included both things I never received and ones that were already mine. She expanded her thoughts. While Anita strolling down the hallway, she was startled by a voice she heard. There must be a way to break off Anita's engagement to the Archduke's son. She was stunned hearing this. It turned out to be her parents murmuring to each other. Her father said, We can't just break it off since the Archduke himself made the match. Her mother expressed her perspective, but his grace addressed the proposal to Marquis Renard's daughter. Dot. Her mother, with evident concern, expressed, If Arabella hadn't gone missing, she would have been the one to marry into their family. If we can find a way to break off the engagement, that spot will naturally become Arabella's. Her father pondered and said, Hmm. Her mother yelled, Bella deserves only the best, and I want to ensure she gets all of it. Marquis Renard embraced his wife warmly while comforting her and whispered, My dear, while she was yelling, it's heartbreaking. All of it belonged to Bella, but then she came along and dash. He hugged her tightly while expressing his perspective. I feel the same way. I never wanted to let Anita marry into the Archduchy. Arabella is a much more suitable lady of the house than Anita. We shall do our best to make it come true for her her father said while Anita was overhearing the whole conversation. Anita wearing a red gown, standing outside the door was shocked hearing all this. Anita must stay here and continue helping me with the family business, her father added. Suddenly, a figure emerged, ethereal and commanding attention with his golden mane and piercing gaze. His presence, though unexpected, offered a brief respite from Anita's tumultuous thoughts. What's got you so distracted? It's been a while since we've seen each other. His voice, like a soothing melody, reached her ears, stirring emotions long suppressed. Anita, with a trembling voice laden with sorrow, struggled to articulate her anguish. Oh, my apologies. She persisted in offering apologies, striving to reassure him. I've been a bit busy lately. I am sorry for turning down your visits and... Knock. Knock. As they lounged in the opulent chamber, surrounded by decadent snacks atop a polished table, an ominous knock interrupted. The boy's curiosity was piqued. Are you expecting someone else besides me? He inquired, his brow furrowed with concern. Anita, taken aback by the unexpected appearance of someone, just exclaimed, Of course not. Knock. Knock. A second rap echoed through the room. Irritation evident in her demeanor, as the persistent knocking at the door interrupted their exchange, she said, Excuse me for a moment. Clack. Anita swung the door open, a voice rang out. Anita. Standing before her were her mother and Arabella, their presence commanding attention. Why don't you introduce Arabella to Lord Axion? Her mother commanded, her words a dagger plunging into Anita's soul. She is your sister after all. I'm sure he would like to meet her, she persisted. Upon hearing this, Anita's fury ignited, 
her spirit brimming with defiance. As she contemplated the possibility of losing the one thing she held dear, she brooded intensely. They can take away everything else. I don't mind, those things were never mine to begin with. In the crucible of adversity, Anita found the ember of her strength, fueling her determination to defy the whims of fate and protect the love she held dear. She pondered. However, when it comes to Axion, I will do everything to ensure they don't steal him from me. The air crackled with tension as her mother stood there, commanded to introduce Arabella to Axion. Inside, Axion's curiosity peaked as he wondered who stood at the threshold and asked, Anita, who is it? Anita's demeanor momentarily faltered when confronted with Axion's inquiry. Anita courteously and subtly turned slightly and uttered, One moment. She swiftly exited, forcefully closing the door behind her with a resounding slam. She left her mother bewildered as she confusedly asked, Anita, what are you dash? Furiously, Anita declared, I refuse. Shock painted her mother's face as she attempted to conceal her comprehension and stammered. What? Anita clarified her stance. I will not introduce Arabella to Axion. She repeated. I refuse. Her mother's shock turned to outrage. What? And she yelled at her. You're always like this. Arabella, positioned behind her mother bewilderedly gazed and attempted to intervene. And mother. Her mother responded with anger. Leave this to me, Arabella. She must be scolded. Her mother's fury escalated. She glared at Anita and said, When will you stop being so selfish? Don't you feel sorry for your sister? Undeterred, Anita snapped back. It doesn't matter how sorry you feel for her. You can't just barge in and force your daughter on him. Anita added, you're being rude to the Archduke's son, mother. Once again, her mother shouted at her. How dare you? Her mother yelled to bring her awareness. How could you be so selfish and awful, Anita? You should be sharing with your sister. While Arabella was fidgeting continuously, confused at the situation, Arabella, her breath quickening, made an effort to halt her mother. Mother, please don't dash. Arabella felt dizzy, stumbled and suddenly collapsed, her world spinning out of control. Panic engulfed her mother as she cried out for her. Bella, Bella, Bella! Darling! Please wake up! Anita, stunned by the turn of events, murmured, I'll call for a doctor. With a cluttered rush, she turned and disappeared inside. Anita dashed through the halls with urgency, her heart racing. She hurriedly entered a room, nearly bumping into the maid. The maid shocked and yelled, Eek! A lady Anita? Gasping and panting, Anita wasn't able to utter a word. The maid flinched and asked, Why are you in such a hurry? Anita barely uttered, Call for a doctor. The maid was shocked hearing this. A doctor? Anita hurriedly explained to the bewildered maid. Arabella fainted in front of the first reception room on the first floor. The maid gasped and could just ask, a lady Arabella fainted? The maid's trembling hands dropped the flower pot she was holding, mirroring the shock that rippled through Anita. Yes, my lady. I'll call for a doctor right away. Anita breathed deeply and turned back. Anita's thoughts raced faster than her feet as she retraced her steps. Each stride echoed the pounding of her heart, and her mind swirled with suspicion. The doctor who examined Arabella the day she arrived assured us she was in perfect health. So why would she faint so suddenly? Anita's mind whispered, wrestling with doubt. Suddenly she paused, lost in her tumultuous thoughts. A chilling realization gripped her. H.A., was this her plan all along? Axion, retaining his captivating demeanor, sat with inquisitive eyes. Arabella sat nervously in front of the Axion and suddenly her trembling voice shattered the tense silence as she stuttered. I... I apologize for barging in like this. To alleviate the tension, she included. Anita should be back soon. Axion offered a curt acknowledgement and said, I see. His piercing gaze bore into Arabella, sending shivers down her spine. Arabella was sweating as she was scared just pondered silently within her own mind. 
Mother told me he was a polite young nobleman, but he's a bit scary. In the midst of Arabella's internal turmoil, memories flooded her consciousness like a raging river. The image of her concerned mother. While she was just worried about Anita, she must have been shocked seeing me faint like that. I'm glad it didn't take me long to wake up. She recalled her mother shouting in concern. Are you all right, Arabella? And Arabella on coming to consciousness just responded. Hmm? Where is Anita? To steer clear of discussing Anita, her mother simply remarked. Don't mind her. Are you feeling all right? After an epiphany, her mother uttered with a grin on her face. This is you should go inside and introduce yourself to Lord Axion. While her mother was trying to pull her Arabella could just utter. Huh? What about Anita? Her mother hastily replied. She'll be back soon. Go ahead and wait in there. Arabella was trembling sitting in front of Axion, questioned herself. Maybe he's mad that I barged in without asking him, just like Anita said. Arabella felt extremely anxious, finding it increasingly difficult to remain seated. She yearned to flee and found herself engaging in silent self-talk within her mind. This is so suffocating. I don't want to be here. She just squeezed herself while thinking about her parents' words. But I don't want to disappoint mother and father. Her father had said to her. I am sure the Archduke's son will take a liking to you, Arabella. Her mother had reprimanded her. You have to make a good impression, all right? I apologize for making you uncomfortable. She finally managed to utter, her voice betraying a hint of apprehension. Axion's response pierced through the tension like a blade. You have no reason to apologize to me. You weren't the one insisting on this unpromised meeting. Arabella's heart skipped a beat as realization dawned upon her. She pondered, Oh, did he hear everything we said outside? The shock of the possibility reverberated through her, leaving her speechless for a moment. Axion continued, offering a slight smile along the way. And as you said, Anita will be back soon. As she locked her eyes on him, a stream of thoughts flowed through her mind. He seems like a different person when he talks about Anita. Anita's mind swirled with a torrent of thoughts as she treaded through the mansion's corridors, her heart heavy with uncertainty. Arabella, did you go as far as fainting to fool me and meet Axion? Or perhaps it was her own mother, pulling the strings behind Arabella's actions. She also thought about her mother's harsh words. How could you be so selfish and awful, Anita? You should be sharing with your sister. She questioned herself. Was it mother's order? It must have been. She wants Arabella to have the best of everything after all. Each step she took seemed to echo the resentment that lingered within the mansion's walls, a stark reminder of her isolation. She thought, Everyone in this mansion resents me. They look at me as if I'm someone who took everything from Arabella with no remorse. While contemplating, she doubted herself. Do I have to give everything of mine to Arabella just to be accepted in this household? Lost in this maze of confusion, she finally reached the door and hesitantly knocked. Knock. Knock. With a creak, the door opened. She looked at Axion and a poignant realization dawned upon her. Axion is the only one I can call mine. Do I give you up too? Axion turned with a smile and Arabella rushed towards Anita and said, Anita! And she immediately apologized. I'm sorry for worrying you. Whereas Anita looking at her just thought, You're here to take everything from me. Arabella gently squeezed Anita's hand and smiled. Where have you been? I was waiting for you. Anita continued talking to Arabella in her mind. So why are you smiling at me like that? As Arabella tentatively approached Anita, her heart raced with nervous anticipation. Having a glance at Asian, she began. Anita. But before she could finish, Anita abruptly said, You can go. Stunned, Arabella's face lit up with joy and she stuttered. Are really? Relief flooded through Arabella as Anita's words softened, revealing vulnerability. Upon noticing Axion's presence nearby, she whispered softly. Thank you. Arabella breathed, her fear dissipating in the face of unexpected understanding. Creak. She opened the door. 
With a newfound sense of freedom, Arabella's face lit up with a genuine smile. Okay then, have a good time with Duke Anita, she said. Observing Arabella walking with genuine joy, Anita contemplated quietly. How strange. Arabella is the one who had a rough life growing up in poverty, and I was the one who enjoyed the luxuries of growing up in a noble house. She continued pondering. Still, somehow, Arabella is much more cheerful and innocent than I am. Creek. The door was closed. Anita's heart pounded with a mixture of guilt and relief as she turned towards Axion, her words heavy with regret. I apologize for my mother's rude behavior, Axion. Axion, with an air of grace, responded softly with a smile. It's fine. Anita sighed, continued in a respectful manner. I am sorry, but I think we should end our meeting early. Axion stood up from the chair as he spoke. All right. Axion, while stepping towards Anita, said with genuine kindness, Anita, I would like to invite you to the Archduke's mansion next time? He asked politely. Will you come to see me? Anita, feeling a glimmer of hope amidst her turmoil, stood transfixed as Axion's charming personality enveloped her. She considered it. My dear is telling me that I can run to him for help. I'll send you an invitation tomorrow afternoon, he promised. In the depths of her mind, she pondered. He's saying to run away from the house that has treated me like a nuisance since Arabella's return, and responded, All right. Anita, who had long felt overshadowed and neglected in her own family, continued pondering, And come to the Lacade Manor, where everyone will welcome me. In the dimly lit dining room, a table was decorated with an array of various foods. Bella sat at the polished wooden chair around the table, her delicate frame barely making a dent in the cushion of the chair. Her father's voice, gentle yet laced with worry, cut through the silence, addressing her. Do you like the food, Bella? He inquired, his eyes betraying concern. A faint smile played on Bella's lips as she nodded softly. Yes, father. It's delicious, she replied, her voice barely audible. Her mother's concern was piercing through the air as she said, Have some more, you're far too skinny. Yet, amidst the facade of familial concern, Arabella's thoughts were consumed Anita, whose silent suffering remained unnoticed. Anita, relegated to the sidelines, picked at her salad, a symbol of her unnoticed presence in the family dynamics. But Arabella reached out with a gentle inquiry. Anita, do you not like steak? All you've been having is a salad. Anita's response was hesitant. She was avoiding Bella's gaze. Oh, are you watching your weight? I don't think there's any need for that. Bella offered, her concern genuine. With a smile on her face, her mother replied. Anita's never been a heavy eater. Her mother's voice, tinged with concern, redirected the focus onto Bella, whose slender frame seemed to amplify the weight of her parents' worry. More importantly, you should be the one eating more. You are all bones, her mother pleaded. Her father added, That's right. You should be worried about yourself. You need to gain some weight. But as their concerns swelled to suffocating proportions, Bella, while fidgeting, apologized. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll have more. But her mother amicably said, Why are you apologizing? You did nothing wrong. Her father added his guilt. We're the ones to blame that we were stuffing ourselves while you starved. Her father gazed at Anita and said, Isn't that right, Anita? Anita paused eating. Her father and mother both wore icy expressions as they glared at her. Her father took up the reins of reprimand. His words echoed with authority and disappointment. I heard all about how you treated Arabella earlier today. He yelled, How could you be so rude to your sister? Your sister suffered while you enjoyed extravagant food and clothing in this house. Arabella flinched at the sight of her father's anger. Her father persisted. You should feel sorry for her. Anita clinked the knife in the salad. While wiping her tears, Anita said, While I understand why you two feel bad about the way Arabella grew up, Please don't use me as a tool to lessen your guilt, she implored, her words a defiant plea for acknowledgement, 
a refusal to be a pawn in their game of absolution. Her father furiously yelled, Anita, how dare you say such things in front of your sister? Arabella stuttered nervously. Oh. Finally, unable to bear the weight of their disdain any longer, Anita rose from her seat, her resolve stealing against their taunts. I'll excuse myself so you three can keep playing house, she declared, her voice trembling with suppressed emotion. Her mother's gaze burned with fury as Anita dared to defy their expectations. How dare you? She spat, her words laced with venom. Ignoring her mother's searing glare, Anita turned to leave, her footsteps echoing in the strained silence. But her mother's anger refused to be contained. Hey! Sit back down right now! She demanded, her voice rising to a crescendo. Her father's belated call of her name only added to the chaos, a feeble attempt to halt her retreat. Anita! He shouted. Meanwhile, terrified Arabella nudged and accidentally dropped the fork from her hand. Anita's mother attempted to rein in her husband's outburst. Darling, you mustn't yell in front of Arabella. You're scaring her, she implored, the concern in her voice a stark juxtaposition to her earlier hostility. While seated, scared Arabella apologized as she reached down to retrieve her fork. I am sorry but her father's sudden realization softened his tone as he tenderly addressed her. No, no, I'll apologize, dear. I wasn't mad at you. Arabella sat on the floor conversing with her father while the maids cleaned up the spilled food. Her father added, I was worried that Anita may have hurt your feelings. Pay no mind to what she says. She's always been difficult. Arabella was just listening to her father carefully. Click. Clack. Anita angrily swung open the door, the noise audible in the dining room. On this noise, Arabella just turned and said quietly, Anita. Arabella's mother, seeking solace for her daughter, whispered to her husband, Darling, are you really going to let Anita behave like that? Her husband with a grit contemplated and ordered a maid. Tell Anita to see in my office in an hour. Upon hearing her father's directive, Anita mused. He told me to see him in an hour. While retrieving a book from the bookshelf, she pondered. But it'll take him at least two until he's done fawning over his beloved daughter. While stepping towards the sofa, she said, I'll just read a book until then. Anita, lost in the pages of a tome chronicling the empire's origins, mused. This book is about the founding of the empire. As she flipped through its pages, she admitted, It's not exactly an exciting book but I like it. Because it talks about Lake Alkenti. Recalling its significance, she reflected. Alkenti. The spirit animal that aided the first emperor in founding the empire is supposedly from this lake. Anita mused. Just thinking about the lake makes me feel better. Because it reminds me of who I met there. Suddenly a vivid flashback emerged. A young girl holding a woman in the lake the girl carrying the lady out of the water, the girl coughing out and expelling water. The girl wondered at something. A boy with azure eyes. A boy with a captivating demeanor and golden hair. She mused, Lake Alkenti is where I met a boy with eyes bluer than this legendary lake. Eight years ago, amidst a tableau adorned with an array of delectable treats, Laughter and conversation filled the air. Seated around the opulent table were two elegant ladies accompanied by their enchanting young daughters. Look at all those white flowers, exclaimed one of the ladies, her gaze drawn to the resplendent flowers adorning the surroundings. Awestruck by the sight, one of the little girls could not contain her wonder. Oh my, she exclaimed with a mix of delight and curiosity. Joining in the admiration, the other lady expressed her intrigue. I wonder what they're called. Among the gathering was nine-year-old Anita Renard, a picture of youthful innocence and curiosity. Observing the scene with a cup of tea in hand, Rachel Savi, the eldest daughter of Count Savi, addressed Lady Renard with a hint of concern. Miss Renard, you've just been staring at the lake this whole time. You must be bored. Turning her attention from the serene vista of the lake, Lady Renard reassured. 
Of course not, Miss Savi. With a pointed glance towards Anita, she sought to re-engage her attention. So you would recall what I was just talking about, wouldn't you? Caught momentarily off guard, Anita flashed a sheepish smile before swiftly responding. Indeed, I do. The flower you were wondering is called Robina. It's a flower with a scent as powerful as its beauty. With a polite nod, she added, I hope that helps. Satisfied with the response, Lady Renard acknowledged. Yes, well, thank you. As the afternoon tea continued, Anita, her youthful exuberance momentarily subdued, silently pondered. I wonder how much longer I have to be here. The park adjacent to Lake Alkendi was renowned as a favored rendezvous for the aristocracy. Here, young noble ladies often convened for afternoon tea, and today's gathering was no exception. Miss Renard's stern gaze pierced Anita as she scolded her softly. Though I had a separate reason for coming, that one keeps glaring at you, you should try to befriend her. Adding a touch of assurance, she continued, They want to be friends with you. Anita, though aware of the truth, tapped her temple and pondered silently. No way. What they want is to be close to my family. Seated at the table with others, Anita's mind drifted. This mode of light is a low-level spirit only I can see. I first met it here two years ago. Recalling the comforting melody it brought, Anita mused. Whenever I'm near Lake Alkenti, I can hear its voice. Perhaps it held a magic that could aid her parents in finding her lost sister. To safeguard this possibility, Anita resolved to keep it a secret. Feeling a unique connection to the voice, Anita pondered. I wonder why only I can speak to this it doesn't seem like anyone else can sense its presence. The voice pierced her thoughts, urgently. Anita, someone fell in the lake. Anita scanned the surroundings, desperation creeping in as no one moved to help. Is there no one around to help? As panic set in, she realized there was no time for explanations. No. There isn't she started to lose consciousness, so she needs help immediately. Conflicted, Anita clenched her dress tightly, pondering her options. Should I ask everyone to go on a walk? She wondered, only to answer herself. No. If she's already losing consciousness, there is no way for me to explain how I know that someone is drowning. Unable to articulate the inexplicable voice she heard, Anita remained in turmoil. In that case, Anita, amidst confusion and hesitation, finally made a decision and rose to her feet. All eyes fixated on her, wondering about her next move. Anita, enveloped in a fog of uncertainty, uttered, I'm going to take a walk around the lake. As she headed towards the water, a familiar voice echoed, Over there. Anita swiftly removed her shoes, affirming. She already sank below the surface. Placing her shoes delicately on the lake shore, she urged. Try to get people to come here. The voice interrupted once more. I can't, wait, don't tell me you're. Anita, propelled by a sense of urgency, moved towards the lake to rescue the person. The voice persisted. H, hold on, Anita! Anita! Though bewildered, Anita pressed on determined to aid the person in distress. Ignoring the voice, she leaped into the water. Splash. Anita spotted a lady in the lake and internally exclaimed, There she is! Despite her efforts, she struggled to lift the lady out of the water and cried out, I can't pull her up on my own. Anita waited, hoping for assistance, and wondered, How much longer until someone gets here? As fatigue set in, she realized, at this rate, I might drown too. Then, a sudden sight caught her attention, filling her with hope. What's that? A pillar of water? Holding onto the pillar, they both emerged from the water's grasp. Astonished, she marveled. A mysterious pillar of water saved us. Coughing up water, Anita contemplated the miraculous intervention of the enigmatic pillar. She sat there, still in awe, reminiscing about the miraculous pillar that had left her breathless. A pillar of water, she uttered softly. While refreshing this memory, Anita said, It was an unexplainable phenomenon, but I wasn't surprised. As Anita sat by the lakeshore, lost in wonder, a distant voice broke the tranquility. Your Grace, 
Someone was urging people to make way for Prince Lakade. That is Archduchess Lakade. Please stand aside. Anita, while reflecting on the lake's profound history, explained, This lake is part of the founding myth of the empire, after all. Someone inquired the lady beside her with utmost respect. Are you all right, your grace? Then, out of the blue, a voice addressed her directly, expressing gratitude. I don't know how to thank you, miss. Suddenly, Anita was jolted from her thoughts as a charming figure approached her, his presence commanding attention. I am Axian Lakade. He introduced himself, his blue eyes sparkling. Thank you for saving my mother. Anita was momentarily taken aback by his charisma but managed to respond. It was nothing. That was how Axian and Anita met for the first time. I don't think I told him my name back then. Anita mused, lost in contemplation. As she pondered how Axian had managed to discover her identity and reached out to her, she reflected. However, Axian somehow found out who I was and sent me a letter. She continued to ruminate. That was we got to know each other. Glancing at the pendulum clock, she contemplated departing, remarking, I guess I should get going. Click. Clack. She was descending the stairs adorned in a regal green maxi, the red carpet guiding her path. Mid-stride, she halted abruptly upon overhearing a hushed conversation from a nearby room. Arabella fainted today, but the doctor couldn't identify the cause. Her parents whispered urgently to each other. Concern etched on her mother's face, she implored her father. We need to hurry up and break off Anita's engagement. If rumor were to start about Arabella being ill, she'll never be able to marry into the Archduchy. The revelation hit Anita like an unexpected blow. Her father, considering an alternative, proposed. But Arabella could still marry the prince, couldn't she? Her mother's incredulous response echoed through the room. The prince? Suspicion clouded her thoughts as she questioned. Are you talking about the cruel man infamous for his vast experience with women? With conviction, her mother declared. There is no saying we won't end up like the Empress's family. Her mother's shocked inquiry silenced her father, leaving him unable to offer a retort. Their mother emphasized her point. The prince is not an option. Contemplating Arabella's fate, her mother expressed empathetically. We have to make up for all the love Arabella missed out on. Even after she gets married. Amidst the charged atmosphere, her father proposed a daring plan to her mother. How about this, then? We'll ensure that the Empress notices Anita. Anita, eavesdropping at the doorway, was stunned by her parents' discussion regarding her fate. Undeterred, her father elaborated on his scheme, suggesting, If Anita becomes a citrus for the prince, it'll be easier to break off her engagement. And with her broken engagement as an excuse, we can also refuse the prince's marriage proposal. Enthusiastic about the idea, her mother exclaimed, That's a great idea. Let's do that, my darling. Anita, seething with anger as she listened, reflected bitterly, I did so much for my family, yet this is how they thank me. Contemplating her father's past actions, she sadly mused, I am really starting to wonder why does my father treat me like this without a second thought. Recalling the day she rescued the Archduchess, she questioned herself. I was the one who rescued the Archduchess that day, so why does he act like this engagement was offered to our household in general? Fed up with her obedient facade, Anita contemplated her father's expectations, pondering. Does he really believe I will continue to stay obedient and loyal to the family? Because I'm his daughter and that's my duty? That makes no sense. Anita's suspicions about her parents' peculiar treatment nod at her. I look nothing like either of my parents. People have always had doubts about my lineage because of that. Striding over the crimson carpet in the grand mansion, memories flooded back to Anita of the time when her sister Arabella's arrival had sparked rumors about her lineage. And once Arabella returned, the rumors only got worse. Recalling an overheard conversation among the maids, Anita's heart sank. Don't you think it's strange? One maid remarked to another. Then, correcting herself, she added, Lady Anita, I mean. Lady Arabella is the spitting image of her parents, but Lady Anita isn't resembles. 
Everybody whispers about it, but they all agree. It's strange. The other maid speculated. Who knows? SHE might not even be a noble dash. Caught eavesdropping, the maid gasped at the sight of Anita. Staring her down, Anita's voice cut through the air like a whip. How impudent! How dare you speak about me like that! The maid, trembling and bewildered, stammered. Teach that's not what I meant, my lady. Anita's fury surged as she commanded. Leave this house at once. I'll personally make sure my mother knows that her insolent maids have been bad-mouthing their masters. Anita left the room while the maid kept pleading for forgiveness. She pondered. More and more people are doubting my rightful place here. Doubt if I don't do something, I'll lose everything to Arabella. With a pang of empathy for herself, Anita reflected. My place here, my engagement, and... Axion. Clenching her fists, she declared through gritted teeth. I won't let you do this to me. With steely determination, she proclaimed. I won't let you use me like this. Anita stood in the dimly lit chamber, her eyes fixed on the celestial canvas outside, adorned with twinkling stars. S. Knock. Knock. Suddenly, a firm knock echoed through the silence, prompting Anita to grant entry with a composed. Come in. Clack. A maid entered, who announced, My lady, Sir Elmond of the Lacade Knights is here. Anita, while introducing, said, This is my personal maid, Harriet. She's the only staff member in this house who is kind to me. Reflecting on their dynamic, Anita pondered, But that's probably just because I reward her generously. Memories of her treatment with Harriet flashed through her mind. Expressing gratitude for Harriet's dedication, Anita commended. I see. Good work. With a graceful gesture, she bestowed a glittering clip upon Harriet, remarking, This is for you, Harriet. Do with it whatever you want, she said. Harriet's face lit up with joyous appreciation, exclaiming, Thank you, my lady. Click. Clack. As Harriet retreated, her steps resonated with newfound contentment. Gazing at the gift, she whispered to herself, I'm glad I decided to keep serving Lady Anita. As she admired the glimmering clip, she mused, If I went to serve Lady Arabella like the other servants, there's no way I would receive gifts like this. She contemplated in her mind, Serving Lady Anita, who rewards me as well, is much better than the naive Lady Arabella. With a bouquet in hand, she pondered, it's odd. How can Lady Arabella be so naive when she grew up in poverty? Then, a realization struck her. Shouldn't Lady Anita be the one to act like she lives a sheltered life? While securing the clip in her hair, she suddenly recalled. Why didn't she pat me on the head today, though? Ah, uh, I was looking forward to it. Clack. The sound of the door opening startled the man sitting. Anita entered radiating joy and addressed. Sir Elmont, responded, inquiring about her well-being. It's been a while, my lady. How have you been? Rick Elmont, vice commander of the Lacade Knights. Holding something from him, Anita remarked, I had heard you return from the northern region, but I didn't expect you to come yourself. Glancing at the letter, she mused. I expected Axon to send a servant. Turning back to Sir Elmont, she remarked, you're only here to hand me an invitation. With a smile, he explained the reason. I volunteered because I wanted to see you. Surprised, Anita replied. How nice of you to say that. While sitting on the sofa, she inquired. Did everything go well in the northern region? Sir Elmont courteously responded. Yes. It was just a small dispute this time. Reflecting on the bitter cold, he admitted but I really cannot get used to the cold. Delving into the region's harsh climate, Sir Elmont elucidated. The northern region of the empire is notorious for its freezing temperatures. Even in the middle of the summer, it feels like early winter. Expanding on the region's challenges, he continued, and nothing grows in the barren soil. But valuable mines located in the region led to disputes. Detailing the handling of disputes, he explained, normally, it would be the emperor's duty to resolve such issues, 
but when it comes to the northern region, the emperor always sends the archduchy's knights. Anita vividly recalled her exchange with Axion amidst the tranquil garden, her voice resonating with conviction as she questioned. Why doesn't your family ever challenge the emperor's orders? The Lakade family is powerful enough to say no. While pondering Axion responded, There's something we're looking for in the northern region, you see. With her hair dancing in the breeze, she hung on every word as Axion continued. This way we can look for it without rousing the emperor's suspicion, so there's no reason for us to refuse. Anita's mind drifted back to that moment, pondering while having a cup of tea. I wonder if they're still searching for whatever it is. The delicate clink of the cup meeting saucer punctuated her musings as she remarked. I'm glad you were able to make it to the capital before winter. Will you be returning to the Archduchy's territory now? Sir Elmont responded. No, I need to report to the Emperor about what happened in the Nordash. But before Sir Elmont could complete her answer, a thunderous voice from outside shattered the tranquility and grabbed their attention. We have a guest from the Lakade family? Why was I not informed of this earlier? Her mother's voice pierced the air, demanding, Hurry up and knock on the door! Knock, knock. With a gentle tap, a maid interrupted. Lady Anita, Lady Renard would like to see you. In a composed tone, Anita graciously replied, Tell her to come in. The door creaked open, revealing her mother with a visage of astonishment. With a touch of reproach, she addressed Anita. Goodness, Anita. Why didn't you tell me you were with a guest? I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Sir Elmond rose up. Observing her mother's facade, Anita couldn't help but ponder. Look at her, how pretending like she hadn't just been told about it. Sir Elmont while greeting said, Greetings, Lady Renard. With a courteous nod, he introduced himself. My name is Rick Elmont, Vice Commander of the Lacade Knights. Lady Renard, visibly wondered, exclaimed, Oh my! The Vice Commander, you say? Sitting beside Anita on the plush sofa, she marveled. I can't believe the vice commander himself came all the way here just to deliver an invitation. My daughter has put through so much trouble. Sir Elmod frowned as he asserted. It's no trouble at all. Anybody from the order would have jumped at the chance. It concerns last Anita, after all. With a sly smile playing on her lips, Lady Renard countered. Is that so? I had no idea Anita was so close to the Archduchy's knights. Maintaining his composure, Sir Elmod respectfully continued. It isn't just Archduchy knights. Everyone from the Lakade house is very fond of Lady Anita. While explaining the reason, he said, She saved our Archduchess, after all. In a dismissive tone, Lady Anita retorted, Oh, you mean what happened eight years ago? Attempting to diminish Anita's contribution, Lady Renard interjected. I heard it was thanks to the doctor she survived, not Anita. Sir Elmont's glare spoke volumes, silencing any further debate. As Lady Renard's gaze fell upon the letter resting on the table, she speculated. Oh, that must be the invitation. With a hint of anticipation, she reached for it and said, I would love to see what Sir Axion wrote Dash. Before she could get hold of it, Anita grabbed it, declaring, I'm sorry, mother. I have yet to read it myself. She added with a playful smile on her face. It would be rude for someone other than the recipient to open it first. As she unfolded the letter, its exquisite aroma enveloping her senses, Anita remarked, it smells of roses. Holding the letter, after realizing that there was a rose petal in it, Anita said, I see. Axion included a rose petal. How sweet. She read it. Dearest Anita, I invite you to join me for afternoon tea in the Lakade Manor Gardens in one week. I would be delighted to see you. Your friend, Axion. With a serene smile gracing her lips, Anita gracefully declared, Please let him know I will be there. Acknowledging her decision, Sir Elmont dutifully replied, Yes, my lady. Meanwhile, seated in contemplation, Lady Renard mulled over her plans. I have to send Arabella with her. Once she meets her, 
the Archduchess will realize that Arabella is a much better match. Attempting to broach the subject with Anita, she expressed her concerns. Anita, I worry about Arabella. Making an empathetic face, addressing Sir Elmont, SHR said. While Anita could socialize since she was a child, Arabella never had the chance. In a hushed tone, she lamented. My poor Arabella. Anita, perceptive to her mother's intentions, internally questioned. Is she that desperate to make Arabella Axion's fiancé? Her dream will never come true, so I'll let her continue wasting her time. After a moment's reflection, Anita, cup of tea in hand, casually remarked. I don't mind taking Arabella with me, though I'm not sure if she'll enjoy it. Her mother, quick to reassure, chimed in. I'm sure she will. Turning to Sir Elmont for approval, Anita inquired. Would that be all right, Sir Elmont? His countenance brightened with affirmation. Of course, my lady. You can ask for anything you wish of us. Seeking leave, Sir Elmont respectfully requested. I should head over to the Imperial Palace now. May I take my leave? Anita affirmed. Of course, Sir Elmont. Lady Renard interjected. Please take good care of Anita. Clack. With a resounding click, the door sealed shut behind Sir Elmont's departure. Fixing a steely gaze upon Anita, Lady Renard wasted no time in addressing the issue at hand. Now Anita, we need to talk. I heard you fired a few maids without my permission today. She yelled furiously. One of them was my personal maid. What is wrong with you? Holding a cup of tea. Anita, composed despite the confrontation, calmly explained. They were bad-mouthing their masters. We can't trust anyone like that to work for us. We can't just fire them without warning? Lady Renard's voice rose in exasperation. Anita set down her teacup delicately, asserting, It was all for your own good, mother. I know you dislike servants like that. With a grin smile on her face, Anita said, They might even tell outsiders about what goes on in our manor. Anita's pointed remarks brought realization to Lady Renard, who reluctantly conceded, W.L. that's... Holding back her anger, she said, All right, I'll let it go just this once. There are more important matters. Anita echoed her mother's words, questioning. More important matters? With a wide smile, Lady Renard revealed her intentions. When Arabella goes to meet the Empress in ten days, I would like you to join her. She explained. Arabella has never had afternoon tea with anyone, so she'll need your help. Go with her, so she won't be anxious. Anita's frowned as she contemplated her parents' schemes. They're planning to offer me as a marriage candidate for the prince instead of Arabella when the topic comes up, she realized. Imagining about her engagement, she thought in her mind. If the Empress gets involved, breaking off my engagement to Axion will be a simple matter, and Arabella won't have to marry that womanizer prince, either. As Lady Renard rose from the sofa, Anita voiced her concern. Shouldn't you ask Her Majesty for permission first? While standing up, Lady Renard dismissed her daughter's query. She has already permitted a dot o, and about your engagement. Anita squeezed her clothes as Lady Renard's words struck a nerve. Turning to face Anita once more, Lady Renard admonished. You realize that was originally Bella's right. She continued. Know your place and stop deluding yourself, Anita. Lacade Manor In the serene tranquility of a garden, a lady, engaged in conversation with Axion, broached the subject. I heard you went to see Anita. Seated amidst an array of decadent desserts, she queried Axion further. Has anything changed in that household? Axion's response was succinct. No, everything was the same. With a heavy sigh, she expressed her dismay. So, they still treat her like that. In a poignant flashback, a vision of a young girl, clad in regal blue attire, confided. I would like to travel far away once I come of age. Contemplating her words, the lady surmised. It sounds like she wants to cut ties with her family. A sudden realization dawned upon her, prompting the admission. Judging by the way they treat her, it makes sense. 
Turning to the innocent girl, she posed a gentle query. Would you like to stay here with us until you come of age? But the girl, with unwavering resolve, declined, stating, Thank you, but I cannot turn my back on my duties. Lost in contemplation, she reflected. She keeps rejecting my offers that I should stop pressing her. Turning back to Axion, she acknowledged her own remorse. I should have rescued her as well. Curious, Axion inquired. Are you worried about Anita? She clarified, burdened by her own sense of guilt. No, but I regret it. I should have insisted on her living with us. In the luxurious ambience of her golden-hued room, Anita savored a cup of tea, clad in a resplendent maroon and green royal max with a delicate white frill. Amidst her solitude, echoes of her mother's reproach lingered, vividly reminding her of recent scoldings. Your behavior has been inexcusable lately. You are confined to your room for the time being. Anita's mind wandered to the previous day's promise of familial unity. Just yesterday, they said, we should eat together as a family for Arabella's sake. She punctuated her contemplation with the clinking of her fork against the salad plate, pondering the mercurial nature of her family's decisions. They changed their minds so easily. Interrupting her reverie, a gentle knock rapped at her door, prompting her to grant entry with a composed. Come in. The creak of the door heralded the arrival of Philip, the Renard family's esteemed butler. With an air of deference, he conveyed his message. My lady, Master Renard wishes to see you in his office. Acknowledging his summons with a nod, she acquiesced. All right. Sensing his lingering presence, she inquired. Is there anything else you want to say? Philip, ever dutiful, hesitated before expressing his apprehension. I believe Master Renard is going to give you more work to do for him. Contemplating the implications, Anita responded calmly. I'm sure he will. Yet, Philip's concern persisted, evident in his next words. It's too much. You are still so young, so why do Master and Mistress Renard always dash? His sentence trailed off as Anita interjected with a gentle smile. That's enough, Philip. As Philip turned to depart, facing away, Anita issued a stern warning. You mustn't jeopardize your position. Firmly, she added, you know what would happen if father were to hear what you were about to say, don't you? With a tone of reprimand, she continued. You'd be kicked out before you could receive your severance pay. So mind your words. With that, she gracefully returned to her chair. In Philip's mind, a silent acknowledgement echoed. Yes, my lady. I cannot be kicked out just yet. I must stay. Concerned for Anita's well-being, he quietly ruminated. For you, Lady Anita, my true mistress. As Anita entered her father's office, he gestured towards the scattered papers and remarked, Take all this paperwork with you. With raised voice, her father exclaimed, Since you're staying at home all day instead of socializing, you should be able to do this in four days. Standing before her father, Anita reflected on the situation. Ever since Arabella returned, He's been actively preventing me from participating in any social events. While her father continued his reprimands, she couldn't help but think. And he's making it sound like it's my fault. Recalling her early responsibilities, she reminisced. I began assisting my father with running our household. Having a flashback of a little girl with bundles of papers in front of her, she said. When I was just twelve. Reflecting on a decision made a decade ago, she added. It's already been ten years since I decided to cut ties with my family once I was old enough because I realized there was no place for Anita Renard in the Renard family. Continuing her train of thought, she expressed, Despite that, I had always considered it my duty to do my part as a member of this house until I am old enough to leave. Considering her steadfast commitment, she reasoned, That's why I always did everything without complaints. Lost in contemplation, she observed the scattered papers on the ground and lamented. However, all I'm doing is busy work that my parents don't want to do. Amidst her reverie, her father's voice cut through, yelling. Why aren't you answering me? This is easy enough for anyone to do in no time. A smirk played on Anita's lips as her father questioned. Are you afraid it might be too hard for you? 
With a playful glint in her eyes, Anita retorted. If it's that easy, shouldn't you just do it yourself? In response to her defiance, her father yelled. Can't you see I'm letting you do this for your own good? He persisted in his tirade, reminding her of her future. Do you think being the future Archduke's wife is going to be easy? Undeterred, Anita gently countered. Mother doesn't do a single piece of paperwork as the lady of the house. I doubt it'll be any different with the Lacade family. Her father's frustration peaked as he slammed his hand on the table and yelled. I've had enough of your whining. Continuing in a scolding manner, her father asserted. At seventeen, you are old enough to take care of the family's affairs. Yet, in a rare moment of self-awareness, he mumbled. No, thank you. Anita, determined to make him see reason, responded. Unlike you, father, Axion doesn't need help with anything like this. Infuriated by her assertion, he said. What? With quiet resolve, Anita reaffirmed. He is intelligent and knows what it takes to be the head of the house. Turning away, addressing her father directly, she calmly stated, Please do the work meant for the head of the house on your own, father. As she made her way towards the door, her father's voice echoed furiously behind her. You can't keep acting out like this just because Arabella has returned. His anger escalating, he added, You've crossed the line. When Anita reached the door, she heard her father's final decree. Go to your room and reflect on what you've done. Undeterred by his commands, she retorted, I was just about to. With a resounding slam, she closed the door forcefully behind her. Witnessing her behavior, her father seethed with indignation, thinking, How dare she? His hands clenched in fury, he gritted his teeth, thinking, How long must I tolerate that ungrateful girl? A week later, a carriage arrived. Anita, adorned in a royal blue gown with a white frill, her hair neatly arranged in a bun, was lost in her thoughts. Wondering aloud, she mused. I thought my parents would make sure only Arabella made it to the Lacade Manor. Suddenly, her mother appeared, squeezing her hand reassuringly. Anita, she said softly, trying to make her understand. If Bella happens to faint, you have to cover for her. Got it? Anita sighed, inwardly acknowledging the predictability. No wonder. She thought. Both Anita and Arabella settled into the tonga, and as Arabella's nerves got the better of her, she tentatively began. You am Anita? Anita, sensing Arabella's hesitation, gently prompted. What? Fidgeting with nerves, Arabella struggled to articulate her thoughts. She could just utter. Um, well. Finally, Anita's patience waned slightly as she urged. If you've got something to say, just say it. Taking a deep breath to steady herself, Arabella replied, Okay. Anita observed Arabella's condition, recognizing the urgency of the situation. At this rate, she won't be able to tell me whatever it is before we arrive. She mused. Arabella, visibly nervous, stuttered. Hey, Anita, I... I don't agree with Mother. Expressing her concerns, she continued. I would like you and Lord Axion to be happy. You're my sister, so how could I ever dash? Before she could finish, Anita interjected. What do you think sisters are like? Arabella, with a slight but joyous smile, responded. Hmm? Well, sisters love spending time together, and they'll always make up by the next day, even if they fight. Upon hearing Arabella's idealistic view of sisterhood, Anita couldn't help but think. How unrealistic. Directing her question to Arabella, Anita asked, Have you experienced something like that? With a gentle smile, Arabella shared, There was a family that took care of me in the slums. They should be living comfortably now. Continuing her explanation, she added, Father said he sent them money as a way to thank them. Isn't that wonderful? Anita's response was skeptical. Sure, if it were true. Mentally addressing Arabella, Anita thought. But Arabella, our parents are not that generous. Arabella, clutching her gown, reassured. Anyway, don't you worry. I have no intention of stealing Lord Axion from you. Trust me. 
Inquiring further, Anita asked, Have you ever talked to mother about this? Emphasizing her point, she murmured, Hmm? Anita added, Or to your personal maid? Arabella hesitated, replying, And no. Anita, feeling the throbbing in her head, remarked, That means you haven't told them you don't want this. These people won't give up, even if you object. They're too stubborn. Attempting to make Arabella realize, Anita continued, How do you expect them to know what you're thinking? Arabella, telling me your opinion means nothing. As Anita spoke, Arabella's worry intensified, causing her to tightly grip her clothes. When the tanga finally came to a stop, Anita announced, We have arrived. While Anita disembarked from the carriage, Arabella remained seated, consumed by her concerns. In the serene surroundings of Lacade Manor Gardens, lush greenery and vibrant flowers adorned the landscape, emanating delightful fragrances. The sun's rays glistened upon the flora, accentuating their brilliance. Arabella, captivated by the beauty surrounding her, couldn't contain her awe, exclaiming, Wow! Turning to express her joy, she exclaimed, It's so beautiful! Approaching her, Axion noticed her delight and remarked, If I had known the weather would be so lovely, I would have invited you to Lake Alkenti. Arabella, brimming with happiness, responded, This garden is more than enough. As she admired the flowers, she couldn't resist commenting. These flowers are especially beautiful. Turning to Axion, she politely asked, May I smell them? Anita stood amidst her thoughts, contemplating. I wonder what the Robina flower smells like to Arabella. Meanwhile, as Arabella immersed herself in the fragrance of the flowers, she began to feel dizzy. Startled, Anita observed her wobbling figure with concern. Struggling to maintain her balance, Arabella managed to utter, It smells so nice. Axion, with a smile, inquired, Is that so? Arabella nodded weakly, affirming, Why, yes. Observing Arabella's worsening condition, Anita couldn't help but think, She's turning really pale. Alarmed, she began to voice her concern. Arabella? Are you all our dash? Before she could finish, Arabella staggered and collapsed. Anita's voice echoed through the garden as she called out in distress. Arabella! Arabella reclined on the plush bed within the luxuriously appointed chamber, with Axion seated nearby on a comfortable couch. When Arabella's eyelids fluttered, it caught Axion's attention. Upon awakening, Arabella emitted a soft murmur, her consciousness gradually returning. Hmm. Observing her regaining awareness, Axion gently remarked. You're awake. Confusion clouded Arabella's mind as she struggled to comprehend the situation. Who? Experiencing discomfort, she winced. Ah. Uh. Abruptly, she straightened, her eyes widening in recognition. A Lord Axion? With a tender tone, Axion inquired. How are you feeling? Nervously, Arabella queried. Where am I? Why am I? Seeking to reassure her, Axion interjected. You briefly fainted. Stunned, Arabella stammered. I did. Expressing concern, Axion asked. Yes. Are you feeling better? Arabella, still bewildered, scanned the room, noticing Anita's absence. What about Anita? Where did she go? In response to her inquiry, Axion gently responded. She went to talk to the doctor about your condition. She'll be back with him soon, so do not worry. Understandingly, she acknowledged. Oh, I see. The room was filled with silence. Axion was in search of Anita. Observing Axion's anticipation for Anita, Arabella reflected on her mother's remark. Lord Axion seems to have taken a great liking to you, Arabella. Realizing the lack of connection between them, she contemplated. Mother was mistaken. Gazing at Axion, Arabella continued her musings. His eyes only brim with warmth when he looks at Anita. They only brighten when she is in the room. Restlessly, she dwelled on thoughts of Anita. Anita is a kind person. She may appear cold on the outside, but... Having a realization, she pondered. This is wrong. I want Anita to... 
she addressed Axion. Um, Lord Axion? Startled by her address, he turned towards her. Arabella slumped and said, I really like Anita. Axion, with his piercing blue eyes, fixed his gaze upon her and calmly stated, So. Arabella squeezed her hands and replied, I want her to be happy. I swear. I really, really want her to be happy. With a hint of hesitation, Arabella stuttered, It's what I... Interrupting gently, Axion interjected. I feel the same way. Arabella's heart skipped a beat as he continued. I, too, wish for Anita's happiness over everything else. As Arabella absorbed his words, her mind raced with thoughts. I think, she pondered, her gaze fixed on him. A soft smile graced Arabella's lips as she considered Anita's well-being. He'll be able to make Anita happy, she concluded her concern for her friend evident in her thoughts. In the Grand Hall of Arcade Manor, a doctor engaged Anita in a serious conversation regarding Arabella. I suspect Lady Arabella Renard is suffering from sensitivity to divine power. Anita, visibly taken aback, echoed. Divine power? The doctor affirmed with a grave nod. Yes. As he delved into his explanation, he elucidated. It's something that is typically identified early on in life, but it appears she was never made aware of it. For surety, Anita inquired. Are you certain? Explaining the expertise of the doctors within the Archduchy regarding divine knowledge, he elaborated. All the doctors serving the Archduchy are well-versed in magic and divine power. As you know, the Imperial family and the Lakade family received divine powers from the spirit animal. Highlighting the significance of such knowledge, he emphasized. Knowledge in such matters is a basic requirement for serving as a doctor here. Anita, reflecting on the ordinary doctor's oversight, mused. That explains why an ordinary doctor wouldn't have noticed her sensitivity. They wouldn't even think to test for it. Contemplating her parents' understanding of the situation, she speculated. Which means our parents definitely wouldn't know. Anita sighed softly a smile touching her lips as she considered. They must have heard about her fainting by now. I bet they're dying to get her home. Expressing her concerns, Anita inquired. Can she ride in a carriage? The doctor reassured her. Yes, she should be fine after a short break upon waking up. Anita swiftly turned to a nearby maid and instructed. Then please prepare the carriage for us. She should be awake by now. Respectfully, the maid responded. Yes, my lady. As Anita made her way towards the room, she paused in the doorway, observing Axion and Arabella engaged in conversation. I feel the same way. Axion's voice carried through the air, with Arabella seated before him, attentive. Continuing, Axion affirmed. I, too, before adding, over everything else. Witnessing the interaction between them, Anita couldn't help but muse. They look good together. Engulfed in her thoughts, Anita couldn't help but speculate. Even if Arabella hadn't returned, my engagement to Axion was never going to last long. Reflecting on her decision a decade ago, she recalled. Ten years ago, I made the decision to cut ties with the Renards once I came of age. Seeking solace in her reasoning, she continued. Which means that my engagement to Axion will be broken off anyway. However... A surge of anger overcame her as she realized something, causing her to clench her hands in determination. However, it still rubbed me the wrong way that they were trying to take Axion, my only friend, away from me. I won't let them do that. Lost in thoughts of Axion, she whispered softly, Axion, you'll stay beside me as a friend, even when we are no longer engaged, right? Observing Axion from a distance, Anita contemplated. I believe our relationship won't change. However, if I do lose you as well. Walking through the halls of Arcade Manor, consumed by self-pity, she lamented. What else would I have left? As they both arrived at Renard Manor, Marquis Renard inquired of Anita. Where is Arabella? Upon entering, Lady Renard replied. I put her to bed in her room. With frustration evident, Marquis Renard slammed his hand down exclaiming. So, 
Turning his ire towards Anita, he demanded, Why didn't you do anything, Anita? Anita's response was calm yet firm. What could I have done? Her mother interjected. Excuse me? Undeterred, Anita continued. I'm not a doctor. How was I supposed to prevent Arabella from fainting? Her father sighed, attempting to realize Anita. Anita, Bella has had a terrible life. Attempting to convey the hardships of Arabella's life, her father began. Unlike you, she grew up in poverty. You've always been selfish, Anita, but this is too. Anita swiftly interrupted, her voice firm. I could never be as selfish as you, father. Stunned by Anita's retort, Marquis Renard asked incredulously. What? Anita clarified. I heard that you were too cheap to reward the poor people who raised Arabella in the slums. They glared at her angrily as her father began. You. Anita, undeterred, interjected. Arabella seems to be under the impression that you sent them money. Her mother's voice rose in protest. Anita. Unyielding, Anita continued. Also, let's make one thing clear. Who is more at fault? Mother, for sending Arabella with me when she knew she might faint, or me, for failing to stop her from faint. Before Anita could finish her sentence, her father's anger boiled over, and he slapped her. Lady Renard intervened desperately, pleading. Darling, don't you remember that Anita has to go to the palace? Lady Renard persisted in making him realize. But you heard what she just said. Anita, reflecting on her mother's attempt to intervene, wondered. I wondered why mother tried to stop him. But then realization dawned on her. But no wonder. Contemplating the document she had stumbled upon a few days prior, Anita mused. This is why I have no intention of bringing up the document that I found while doing the work that was forced on me a few days ago. Anita pondered further, trying to understand. I won't have anything to do with them in the future, anyway. As Lady Renard restrained Marquis Renard, she admonished. You could have punished her once she was back from the palace. Marquis Renard, unable to control his anger, retorted. But she's not showing any sign of remorse. Anita, with a serene smile, addressed her father. Father, I'd look out for yourself first. A concern may gently touch Anita's swollen face, remarking, That looks painful. It's really swollen. The bruising might get really bad tomorrow. Suddenly remembering something, the maid's expression brightened. Oh, I heard that bruises go away faster if you hold raw meat against them. She offered, Should I bring you some? Anita, mindful of the consequences, replied, What if you get caught by the cook? Sitting on the couch, Anita realized. Don't worry. A ton of medicine will arrive by tomorrow morning. The maid hesitantly inquired. By the way, my lady, did Lady Arabella really just faint out of nowhere? Expressing her concern, she added. It's worrying to hear that she fainted for no reason. Recalling the reason behind Arabella's fainting spell, Anita had a flashback to when she asked Axion. Did you do something to the flowers? Axion confessed. I needed to check something, so I blessed them with divine power. Though I had no idea it would make Lady Arabella faint. Turning towards Anita, he addressed her. Anita, then looked at her intently, inquiring. Are you disappointed in me? 